Hello there everyone, this is Ira, and today's game of the day is Cube and Star, an Arbitrary Love. It was published in February 2014 by Doppler Interactive, a two-person team in LA, and uh, this is another game that I have played quite a lot of already and really, really enjoyed. This game is so my sort of thing. Uh, if you have liked the other games that I've shown you before in the past, then you probably like this one already, but... I want to show you anyway. Uh, by the way, please forgive my voice. It's probably a little scratchy and hoarse. My allergies are just acting up, so I'll do my best. There we go. The ancient cube. In my youth, I knew a lot of stars. Each with their own breed of starry charm, I suppose. But of all the stars I knew, the memory of one star haunts me. At the time, I found its subtle rhythms to be quirky and the reflection of my faces in its facets to be beautiful. But inevitably it became repetitive. And I left to hop across the world. Now, I grow brittle and large, so heavy that the earth itself can no longer bear my bounded. And I sit here and reflect. And regret. But you don't want to hear the tired groaning of an old cube. I'll leave you, instead, with some advice. Fill your heart with joy. Do no harm. And leave the world a more colorful place than when you entered it. That was beautiful, and beautiful voice acting, of course. Now, using the WASD keys on the keyboard, I can move around. There are, uh... Gamepad controls supported, but I have found they do not work very well. I think they were kind of tacked on, and they don't work the way I want them to, so I will stick with using the keyboard. The majority of the game you can play with just WASD, occasionally a uh, spacebar, and later you'll be given a few other uh, tools you can use, which I'll show you later. So at the start, you're just this little white cube. You bounce around. And... Well, that's it, really. You can see... Uh, all these other little creatures busy moving around and adding some color to the world, which is very nice. How do I add color to the world? You may ask. And there is a day-night cycle. There we go, it's nighttime. Well, you add color to the world by getting these little orbs of color. You eat these fruits and they color your cube. Leave home. Bring a little color to the world. Okay. Look at that. Now you can see on some of these squares... Grass is growing after I've walked here. But not on all of them. On the ones that I haven't colored as much, they're still staying kind of gray. Also... Hold on. Let's get another orb. That's a star. That's a star. There's an orb. You'll see that the brightly colored squares do not change to green. Oh dear. I've just picked up a white square. If you hit a, a tree too many times, it does fall down. So we can knock down these trees. However, I don't necessarily want to knock them down. There is a way that you can color them if you get lucky enough to get an orb. Oh, Jesus, way over there. All right. So now, I've got a new color. Let's see if it's possible. Don't, I don't seem to be able to color this one. I think I'm not quite bright enough. But you can see I'm coloring some of them. Maybe this one is colored. Maybe it's just a very, very light color. I would prefer for it to be a darker color. I can always just knock it down. Now, there's a reason I'm concerned about getting rid of all the white ones. Because they drop these white fruits which will remove your color. And I'm not the only one who's affected by these fruits. This world is all about exploration and discovery, and these things here are one of the things you can discover. Bump into them a few times, break them open, and it drops this gem. Through the dust, you discover a sapphire. Lovely. Collected a precious gem. In the upper right there, you can see a list of all the things that I have found. And look at this. Up here, there's another color. And there's another cube. Hello, green cube. It's 
kind of guarding his own little patch of color here. When you bump them, they speak and they release color. To the northeast I became- oh, it- it left. So now we've got this purple kind of here. We can get this one to drop another purple fruit. I can become purple. Boom, I'm purple. Oh, check that out. It's not even purple really, it's like fuchsia. Here's another tower here. There's- when you first start the game, there's just collectible stuff all over the place. And it may seem like it should be easy to collect it all, but let me tell you, it's not. From the turbulent depths, you recover a salaryman's gaze. Hmm. Interesting. Here's another thing to collect right up here. Boom. Searching for meaning, but coming up empty. You discover a lucrative gem of pointed inclinations. Very interesting. It's a relic. Now, if I can get... This cube, because this cube is dropping a color which does not create grass. So what I would really like to do is get him to eat one of these fruits. It's gonna be sheer luck whether he comes up and... I don't think he's gonna... I can eat the fruit. Let's talk to him. To the northeast, my skin prickled with anxiety. I think that's a hint. If we go northeast... We may get an anxiety-inducing color. Now. Some of these squares... Aha! Are the wrong color. And there you can unearth... A regular salary check. Somehow your existence feels more important. More weighty. And here is a journal entry. These are one of my favorite little things. It's painful to speak. These journal entries will be added to the collection. There's also this. This will fill up with uh, different... Well, well, we'll collect more things in another language. Well, actually, it's not really another language. It is English, but it is in code. It is with a different alphabet. And one of my favorite little puzzles in this game is decoding the alphabet. You actually decode it yourself, and when you succeed, it will start automatically translating all of these things. So, it's night, met a few stars. I need some more fruit. Just gonna keep wandering the world here. Fruit! Green fruit. Let's go open this one. Oh! I think, there we go, there's the, the code things. There we go, ancient stones crumble. And from the dust emerges a sullen emerald. So what's this? A curious tome in code. So in my other save file, which I will show you afterwards, I have actually decoded everything. Which I enjoy doing very much. Uh, solving puzzles and decoding things. Searching for meaning coming up empty, you discover a six-faced hub of deceptive refractions. Sometimes I wonder if these, if there is a list of these uh, item names, or if they're randomly generated. I'm actually not sure. Get another gem. The Veil of Time falls. From muck you have wrought a sky blue gem. Nice. Okay, we've got pink. We've got pink. Now, how big is this world? It's pretty big, and we do have a map here. Uh, we are here. And as you can see, there's a giant star here. The giant cube is here. I think, yeah, we can move the map a little bit. There we go. This is where we started. And we're kind of meandering this way. I want to go and check out what this thing is right here. You can also see all these percentages for different colors, which becomes more important later. Well, to be fair, it never really becomes important, but it can become a goal to color the world a certain percentage of uh, different... Specific colors. Get some stars. Everything is just kind of collectible. And I feel like this game has also kind of a lot of commentary on how silly it is that we have these kind of collectibles in games. You discover a regular salary check. You feel valuable. Dominant. There we go. I just want to keep coloring as much as I can. You discover a regular salary check. Somehow your existence feels more important, more weighty. And 
relic. The dust settles and reveals a celestial body of pointed inclinations. Sweet! I've always wanted one of those. Let's grab a new color. Oh, green. Green is my favorite color to use. I do love using green. Green Green is my favorite color, just in general. Oh, there's something up there. We want to grab that. Here we go. The dust settles and reveals a six-faced orb of pointed inclinations. Excellent. Got a pink gem. Now, it may feel like this would get old quickly. And if you if this looks absolutely boring and pointless to you, then yeah, you probably wouldn't enjoy it very much. Through the dust, you discover a salaryman's gaze. Awesome. However, if this looks cute and maybe a little fun... Ooh, these guys speak in code. We can't understand them yet. What is this thing right here? This is very important. There are four of these scattered throughout the world. You break down the monument to pride, and you receive... All that I have built is all that I am. I am proud without regret. Press C to spit burning passion. This is where things start to get really interesting. There we go. Glimpse of Oblivion. I'm not going to keep reading all these messages. They're fairly repetitive. Alright, I've lost my color. I have no color. What shall I do? Well... I've got burning passion. I raised a rook. Oh, this isn't burning passion at all. This is just black. Let's try again. There's kind of a range of colors that you can get. There we go. Raise a flanged pyramid. And what are these? These little people that live inside. Whoops, I squished. Sorry, little people. That was very rude. I apologize. So now I don't actually have to keep using the trees if I don't want to. I can just redify everything. And it also unearths all of these little treasures. So that's handy. Now there are accomplishments for coloring uh, certain percentages of the world. And there is also an achievement for coloring the entire world. I am convinced that it's impossible because there are other little creatures in here which are actively working against you. And also, it's so easy to just miss one little square on the ground that I feel like... Uh, let's talk to this cube right here. I want to see what he has to say. Hello. To the northeast, I saw a strange sparkling. I think they're trying to send me to the star. I also saw something else over here. Oh wait, here we go. Yeah, there it is. Top left there. There is a white triangle. This triangle is a jerk. If he goes on an area without grass... Uh, oh, I was trying to drop a color. You can drop uh, balls of color on them sometimes and it will change them. But it has to actually drop on them from on top of a tree. I'm just getting stars! But if these guys go over an area that has that doesn't have grass... Come on! Go on the boss of color, you jerk! Well, if they go on uh, areas that don't have grass, they will... Uh, here, you can see it. Change it back to black and white. They'll undo all your colorizing. All of these triangles. The only way to stop these triangles is to get everything uh, rooted with grass, which means brightly colored enough that it won't be changed back. Mm. Code. Or to drop a ball of color on them and then they will help you color the world instead. Now again, you can see how big the world is and what a daunting task it is to try to color the whole thing. So let's, let's make a little red. As you can see, oh, some of these didn't have grass on them and I had a lighter color on me. So I kind of uncolored some of them by accident. Alright, let's head straight up to the giant star on the map and see what we've got up there. And here we are. You can see the brightly green colored trees and grass and here is indeed a giant star. Shall we talk to the star? The ancient star speaks. Hello, little one. 
I have been here for a long time and I have not seen anything that would entice me to move. I am sorry. Oh, Star doesn't want to move. Hello, little Oops. I am sorry. Uh, voice acting, truly brilliant. So we found this star, and this seems to be the thing that the giant cube was talking about. And here we go, map. Of course, we are now far away from the giant cube. It might be closer if we go to the southeast, actually. Oh, it might be about the same. I think it's the same. So if we go back now, and maybe try to talk to this guy and tell him, you know, your star is actually here. It is possible to find it again. Oh, I've created a sustainable tiny things population. That's what these little triangle dudes are. Well done me. So these guys will continue to live now. That's spectacular. I'm still making my way back to the giant cube. And uh, yeah, I'm still, I'm not bothering to color right now because I just want to kind of show you guys some of the first little bits of story in here. Uh, but there is actually quite a lot of story, and as you read the journal entries, and you decode the uh, mysterious tome things, you actually discover that there is a lot of story in here. And there's a story about the little things, and about the cubes, and about how the world kind of ended up the way it is. And there are some surprisingly emotional moments, I would say, when... You might feel a sudden pang of guilt, or pride, and kind of realize the effect that you have on this world. Even though this world is huge, and you just move one little square at a time, you do have an effect on it. And there is some kind of tragic story behind a lot of this stuff. Alright, here we go. We're back at the giant cube. Let's see if we can get him excited because we found the star. The world is a big place. Remember my words. Hmm. Does not seem excited. So it seems we have to do more than just talk to both of them. And I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to try to figure out what you need to do in order to get these two back together again. And if you see how the gameplay works, you probably already have a few ideas involving color and the world. And... You know, if I was the star living there, I wouldn't want to leave either, would you? I definitely would not want to leave. So before we take a look at some footage of my old save, which I recorded earlier, before I wiped the save, I don't know how to restore it, so that's all you're going to get. Uh, let's take a look at some of the different perspectives you can get. When you uh, return to the game after starting to play, you can choose a different perspective. Let's take a look at the spindle view. This is my favorite. It basically... It looks like that. So you get a round world here, and it looks like you're just traversing a very small planet, although in fact the world is actually very big and you're nowhere near seeing the entire planet as it would be if it were this size. But it's just a fun way, I like the way it looks, uh, the way you can see things on the horizon. I think it's pretty cool. And there is one other perspective that we can take a look at. So the last perspective is the data view, and this gives us a top-down look at things. There we go. So now everything is just flat, as you can see. Uh, this one is probably very useful for finding missed uh, squares and things like that. But I don't really enjoy playing with it so much. Because it just doesn't kind of feel alive in the way that the other ones do. I like the way the other ones feel. So, uh, with that, let's take a look at some footage that I recorded earlier before I cleared my save to play this. I did actually try to find uh, a way to back up and restore the save, but I actually couldn't do it. I don't know where they store the save data. So, that's alright. I have a fresh game for myself to play and rediscover all over again, and I can show you a little bit of recording from earlier so that you can see what the world looks like when it has a little more color in it. 
So now we're looking at my old save file, where I put, I don't know, something like eight hours into learning the game, exploring, unlocking things, and painting the world. And I will tell you, I have not succeeded in painting the whole world. Let's take a look at the map. There are some big areas that are not painted at all. And of course, you can see all the lines where all these other people and other creatures are painting the world with their own color. You can see the percentages over here with all the different types of colors you can paint. The highest is fertile, 20%. I've been trying to paint the world green, but it is not staying green, you guys. Uh, there are achievements for getting certain percentages of the world uh, certain colors but honestly i think they're basically impossible because there's no way to stop your work from being undone and there are also achievements for painting like a hundred percent of one color but i can't imagine how that could be possible but how did i get so much of the world green i hear you asking or or not asking but i'm asking for you well if we look at the map you see big areas of green here. I did not paint those manually. Here we go, the sun is up, that's what I was waiting for. You'll also notice down the bottom right hand corner, there are these colored squares. There's blue, yellow, red, and orange here, all with different symbols. These have been unlocked by me by completing various tasks. I'm not gonna spoil the whole game for you, don't worry. But I want to show you what they do. Each of these things makes a little note, a little sound. And these sounds have power. So let's get into an area which is definitely not green. And I'll make my favorite song, which releases green color. So we'll stand right here in this orange. And it is blue, 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 yellow, yellow, yellow. And I release balls of green. You can see it can destroy some of the trees. It raises some new structures. And from these structures, the little people come out. These little tiny triangle people. Oops. And they color the world the color that they think the world should be. And as it turns out, the buildings in the green area do not let out green colored little people. They let out purple colored little people, which is why on the map you see lots and lots of purple lines amongst the green. So I really don't think it's possible to uh, color everything. You can also see there's still some places I haven't colored at all. Oh, it's raining. I don't think it counts if the grass doesn't grow. Oh no, we've got white now. There seems to be a range of colors for each of these little music spells. So the balls that come out will be somewhere in the green range, but they won't necessarily be a strong green. And you'll see these ones don't have grass on them. Which means they can be uh, taken over very easily by other colors. So it's not so easy to color the whole world, guys. It is not easy at all. And sometimes you might get a little frustrated. Go. I want everything to be green. I also, I don't know what exactly causes that odd effect. Ooh, there's money up here. Hold on. There are still plenty of collectibles I haven't found yet. I am still coming across them regularly. Money! Pocket a regular salary check. You feel valuable. Dominant. Very philosophical, this game. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That effect right there. Sometimes seems to happen when you change colors, but I haven't pinned down exactly what causes it. Alright, well, let's say... I'm a little sick of- I mean, I, I can create other colors, of course. It's not just the green one. That's just my favorite, because I'm trying to color the whole world green. But all of these places with the little buildings were created by these different spells. Let's go on to this red right here. I don't see any buildings or people on it. Let's try... Blue, yellow, red. Blue, yellow, red. Oh, that gives us black. That's not a color at all, so we need to try something else. How about uh, blue, red, blue, red, yellow, yellow? Hmm. Quite nice. How about blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow? That also gives us green, so it seems like any combination of a blue and yellow in even numbers will give us green. How about uh, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue? 
some kind of pinkish color. And you can do just one one note all, all together, of course, like a yellow, 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 yellow. Oh, they gave me green too. There's a lot of ways to get green. I haven't planned these in advance, I'm just kind of testing them out. Vote red, 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 red. Well, that obviously gives me some kind of reddish color. No grass though, that's not good. Uh, blue, 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 blue. Ah, that gives us blue. So there is some kind of intuition as to what color you'll get. Blue, 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 yellow. Oh, that's white. How about yellow, 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 blue? Mostly yellow. Cool. So this is pretty fun. I, I just like doing this. Of course, sometimes you just get frustrated with the world and with all its colors and all its people and you just go, you know what? I wish it would just go away. Well, you'll notice I haven't touched this last button here yet. And I think it's the V key in the keyboard. No, maybe it's the F key. There we go. Burn it all down. Yes, that's right. Once you've unlocked that power, you can literally burn down the world. <laughs> there we go. World's burned. It also ge generates these little red dudes, which are trying to turn everything black. Let's try to turn it back to green. It looks so sad when it's all burnt down like that. Oh, and now they're turning everything purple, these guys. Oh, that's a nice vivid green. I like that one. There we go. So, that is the world of Cuban Star. There's plenty else to discover and enjoy. There are lots and lots of achievements. Although, as I said, I have the tiniest memory of sweetness, but I have no idea what it means. Oh. Oops, I just killed some more little people. Um, yeah, I still haven't solved everything, and I still certainly haven't shown you everything. But this should give you an idea of what the game is like. If this intrigues you, um, I really have spent quite a lot of hours playing it, and I really do love it. It's very relaxing, very soothing, very interesting. Um, I love the puzzle where you decode the journal entries. I have them decoded now, but there is a puzzle at first, which I showed you, um, where you have to decrypt it, basically, which I thought was a lot of fun. I love stuff like that. And, yeah. Here's my little world. Full of cubes and stars. And colors. And fire. That was a very small fire. <laughs> fire! There we go. And there we go. Alright guys, well thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this little video on Cube and Star, please do leave a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, go ahead and leave a thumbs down. Uh, if you have anything to say, leave a comment. As I keep saying, I'm very interested in knowing what you guys would like to see more of. So if you want to see me play more of this game, or similar games like it, please do leave me a comment and let me know, and I will try to get right on that. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye!